Today, I'm gonna to go over all of the different ways to bypass the Microsoft account requirements in Windows 11. This will hopefully be the definitive guide until of course we find other ways around it. Stay tuned. Do you like saving money? Of course you do. You need to check out today's sponsor, Slick Deals. Slick Deals has a free browser extension available to make saving money online even easier. When you're on a website, just click on the browser extension and it shows you all the deals available for that website. This browser extension will automatically search through all of the most up-to-date coupon codes to find you the best savings based on what you currently have in your cart. Check out this deal I found on Foster & Grant glasses. I love these glasses, but end up breaking a pair at least once a year. Maybe I should buy two. So, follow the link in the description below and get the free Slick Deals browser extension and start saving money today. Unless you don't like saving money. No, Microsoft, I don't want an account. Sorry, not sorry. It's been a while since I did my video on how to bypass the Microsoft account requirement for Windows 11. In that time, Microsoft has added Windows 11 Pro to the list of versions that will require a Microsoft account. So, you can't just use Windows 11 Pro anymore to get around this requirement. So, in anticipation of Microsoft fixing the workaround that I shared before, I'm going to show you four different ways to avoid having to use a Microsoft account in Windows 11. Also, my last video was a little complicated, and some of the new ways that I have found to get around this are much easier. I mean, like, really easy. But before we get into that, I was asked many times in the comments of the last video why anyone would want to do this. And you know, that's a good question. And there are some very valid reasons why you would want to use a local account in Windows. A Microsoft account authenticates your account through the cloud. This can cause some complications if you're in an area with patchy internet or your internet goes down for whatever reason. In fact, whenever I bring an infected computer into my shop, I always do a once over on the system before I plug it into my network. However, when I have a system with a Microsoft account, half of the time it won't let me log in without connecting to the internet. Now, imagine if you had a car that wouldn't run unless it had internet access and you were logged into an account that you were forced to create in order to use the car. This would be awfully inconvenient if you were out in the middle of nowhere with no internet access. Also, it begs the question, who owns the car? If you need the manufacturer's permission to use it, then is it really yours? Many people will claim that if you have no problem with a Google account or an Apple account, then why should we have a problem with a Microsoft account? But you know what? This question misunderstands the problem. First of all, I disagree with Apple accounts just as much as I disagree with Microsoft accounts. I just don't use Apple products, so it doesn't affect me. But in regards to Google or any number of other services online, there's a big difference between those accounts and a Microsoft account. Let me explain it like this. Many of the people watching this video probably don't remember Blockbuster, but it was a video rental service that had about as many locations as Starbucks does today. In order to rent a video, you would have to have a Blockbuster membership. I think you all would agree that that's reasonable. However, imagine if you needed a membership in order to view the DVDs in your own movie collection. I'm sure you would all find that completely unreasonable. That's how I view Microsoft accounts or even Apple accounts. When you sign up for a Google account or Netflix, Amazon, or any number of other services, you're doing it because you want to benefit from the service the company provides. My smart TV is not going to be rendered worthless without a Netflix account. You just wouldn't be able to use Netflix. Now on the flip side, I should not need Microsoft's permission to use my computer. Requiring an account to log into an operating system crosses the line between service and property. My computer is my personal property and I don't need anyone's permission to log into it. It's okay for Microsoft to require permission to use their services, but I'm not okay with them holding my computer hostage if I don't want a Microsoft account. I don't use the Microsoft Store. In fact, I don't use any of Microsoft's proprietary services. I use Windows, and last time I looked, Microsoft has not been able to sell Windows as a service to the general population. 
even though they've been trying to do it for decades. Now they have successfully sold Office Suite as a service, but Windows is still a licensed piece of software, not a service. However, these Microsoft accounts are very much Microsoft wanting to sell Windows as a service. They're getting you prepared for it. They want you to pay a subscription fee in order to turn on your computer. I'm not okay with that, and you shouldn't be either. Finally, the last reason you would want to avoid having a Microsoft account is privacy. Microsoft uses these accounts to track you across different computers and devices. So if you're shopping for new blinds and then you decide to play a little bit of Xbox, don't be surprised if you start seeing ads for blinds. But with all that said, let's get on the computer so I can show you how to avoid setting up a Microsoft account in the first place. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing all of this from a virtual machine just to make it easier for me to jump back and forth between snapshots. This is just so I don't have to reload Windows a bunch of times to show you all the different ways we can do this. So we're gonna go ahead and fire up our virtual machine right now. I had this preset up to start right at the tail end of the setup. So this is right about the time where you're gonna need your Microsoft account. So it's gonna take a second for this thing to fire up, but once it does, I'll be able to show you how to get around it. Okay, now we're in Windows Setup. I'm gonna break this into two different parts. The first two methods I'm gonna show you have to be done with the network disconnected. Now, this isn't talking about plugging it in and unplugging it. Just unplug it, leave it unplugged. So the first two are gonna be like that, and then the last two are going to be with the network turned on, you know, just in case you forgot to unplug your network when you started Setup in the first place. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and do things like normal. We're going to, need to pick our region. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Next and then pick our keyboard, hit yes, and then it's gonna ask us if we want another keyboard layout, just hit skip. And then at this point, it's gonna tell us we need a network connection. Now, as you can see from here, note that it doesn't give us any way to skip. I mean, we're, we're, we're stuck. I mean, we can't do anything here. So here's how you get around that. What you wanna do is you wanna hit shift F10, and that's gonna bring up your command prompt. And then from there, I want you to type in OOBE, and then it's gonna be backslash, no spaces, bypass, NRO. And as soon as you hit enter, it's gonna reboot the computer. And once the computer's rebooted, now what we need to do is we need to go through the entire setup process again, which really wasn't that big of a deal. It was only a couple of settings. So we're gonna pick our region again, hit yes. Gonna ask us our keyboard layout, hit yes. Go ahead and hit skip again. And now the next screen, you're gonna see, let's connect you to the network. However, the new thing is, is I don't have internet. We go ahead and click that, then hit continue with limited setup, and there you go. Enter your name in here, and you can go ahead and set up a local account like normal. So this one right here is actually a cool little way to use Microsoft's own switches to be able to modify the installer so you don't need a Microsoft account. I'd like to find a way to get this just default in a regular installer. So I'm gonna look into that. I don't know if it's possible, but it might be. Okay, so I went ahead and restored the snapshot here. So we're back to the beginning where we were before. And I'm gonna show you the next way in order to bypass a Microsoft account. And this one's pretty easy and this one's been covered a lot by other people, but I wanted to include this in this guide because I'm doing all the different ways that I know of to get around this. Just like before, we're gonna go ahead and pick our region and then pick our keyboard. We're gonna hit yes and then skip on the next one. And then at this point, it gives you the same screen to connect to a network. Now, just like before, go ahead and hit Shift F10 to bring up your command prompt. But this time, what you wanna type is task MGR, and this is gonna bring up your task manager. Go ahead and click on more details here. And then you wanna scroll down until you find the service called Network Connection Flow. It should be fairly close to the top. Here it is right here. And then as soon as you click on it, go ahead and hit End Task, and then you can close these, and there you go. You can create a local account. So, like I said before, this one's pretty well known. It's been covered by a lot of people before, but I wanted to include it in the guide so you can find all the different ways of doing this all in one place. So, now that I did the two that required you to disconnect from the network, now let's go ahead and do the two that require the network to be attached. Let's do it. And then at this point, once it boots up, because it has network, it's going to want to update the installer. That may become a problem in the future because Microsoft may update the installer to make these bypasses not work, but that's okay. That's why I'm including everything that I know right now in how to bypass this. So if one of these doesn't work, you know, 
it is what it is. You can just use the one that does work. So once it's fired up, we're gonna go ahead and like before, pick our region and then go ahead and pick your keyboard. Hit yes, and then you're gonna to wanna to hit skip. And then at this point, it's gonna check for updates. And it's gonna take it a minute, so it's gonna go ahead and update the installer and then restart. So I'll meet you back here once setup restarts. All right, once setup restarts, you're gonna be faced with this screen right here asking you if you wanna name your device. And you know what, just go ahead and hit skip for now. And then from the next screen, it's gonna ask you for your Microsoft account. Now obviously, there's nothing you can do at this point. You can't skip it, you can't say you don't want one, but here's where the trick comes in. Go ahead and hit Shift F10, just like in the last two different ways we do this. And then on this one, we wanna type in IP config, and then space, forward slash, release. And then by doing that, it essentially disables your network. So we're gonna go ahead and close this, go ahead and hit the back button, and there we go, we can create a local account. Now, this one here is really easy, and it kind of works on the same premise as my original video where you have to unplug and replug in the network connection. But by using the IP config command, you can just disconnect the network from within Windows. So it makes it a little bit easier to get through that, that little workaround there. However, the next workaround is my absolute favorite, and this is the one that I'm gonna be using from this point forward. And you know what? You're not gonna believe how simple this is. I mean. Really, watch this. Okay, so now we're in setup again, and just like before, it's gonna have to go through and update the installer and things of that nature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run through this really quick so it checks for updates, and then I'll be back once the updates are done and the installer's restarted. All right, we're back in setup. We're gonna go ahead and hit skip for now. We don't need to rename the device right now. And then from there, it's gonna ask you for your Microsoft account. So, so if you wanna get away from creating a Microsoft account and using a local account, have you tried just entering in a local account? Let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna type in Rich, and we're gonna hit Next. And then for the password, I'm just gonna type 1234. That's not really my password, but we gotta type in something. Then we're gonna click Sign In. Oops, something wrong. Oh no, what in the world could that be? Let's find out. All right, so we're gonna hit next, and that's right. All you have to do is enter in your local account credentials as the Microsoft account, and it'll give you the option to install it with a local account. Now, is that easy or what? So, you have successfully created a local account in Windows 11. Congratulations. Everybody using a Windows computer should be able to choose for themselves whether or not they want a Microsoft account or a local account. Hopefully, one of these methods will work for you. I would imagine that over time, Microsoft may stop some of these from working, but hopefully they don't stop all of them from working. So if one of them doesn't work, then just try one of the other ones. I really hope the last one doesn't stop working because that one's just simple as it gets. I don't necessarily mind companies monetizing their users. I mean, I don't necessarily like it either, but in reality, it's the world we live in. However, I still don't think we should make it easy for them. And if you agree, then check out this video where I show you how to completely disable Microsoft telemetry in Windows 11. Have a great day.